All right, so today we're gonna to talk about how to onboard your new members to your community. And I believe this is a super important episode and we're gonna go super deep into some of the tactics and some of the strategies around how to do that and really give you a step-by-step -step process that you can start to think about and give you some ideas on how to set up your own community onboarding so that you can successfully onboard your new members into your community to create more engagement inside of that community, but also to help you to convert those new free community members into paid customers and potentially high ticket clients. Also, if you like to get access to our free course where we show you step by step on how to launch a brand new community and get your first 100 members in 10 days or less then i'm going to drop a link in the description where you can join our free community to get instant access to that so i'm here with my co-host jeff what's up jeff how you doing man yeah, doing great brother doing excited about this one this is such a critical piece to community yeah yeah for sure so how do we get started with this do we jump right into the tactics or is there some do we need to lay a little groundwork for them at first i, I definitely would go with some groundwork right I I mean, the end result is that, you know, when you start thinking about your community, you got to define it and, and really understand, like, what is the feel that you want your community to have? I mean, ultimately, it's about building a good culture. And uh, typically, that culture is built uh, it off of really the brand that you've kind of created probably in, in the public. And I mean, ultimately, what culture will do is it's going to help you draw the right people in and right. it's going to hopefully kind of expel the wrong people so that when you have that community, you know, it's filled with like-minded people, same kind of vision, same kind of goals, you know, it's a lot of the same type of characteristics. So I think that groundwork is is really important to, to qualify first you know and, and there's different types of communities and there's not necessarily one that's right way or wrong way you know some communities are built a little bit more in fun some are built a little bit more in kind of probably serious business you know some might be a little bit more on that kind of challenging side where you're getting people really challenging thoughts so mm -hmm. i think it's you know crucial at the very beginning to define you know what type of community you want to have what type of culture do you want to create and then be super proactive in doing it you know what yeah. do you think about that no i totally agree and i think it really comes down to your personality and what kind of business you want to build right you want to to build yourself a prison that you hate working in, right? You want to build something that's fun. And, you know, I think when you think about building a community, you really are, I personally am looking to build something where I can hang out with people I enjoy hanging out with. And we're all on the same journey trying to accomplish the same goal. So I think culture is super important and kind of defining that from the beginning, like you said, defining exactly who you want in that community, both from a, a perspective of who's going to be the best people that are more likely to become clients, but also who are the people that you want to hang out with in that community. So I do Absolutely. think it comes around from, you know, you as the leader, how do you want to build something that you can build your business in that community around your business, right? Cool. So that kind of gives us a good foundation to, to think about, but let's start to actually go into some of the tactics. I believe, and I, I think there's, we'll probably leave out a bunch of cool stuff that uh, people are doing out there around onboarding, but at its very basic level, I think there's a few elements that are very important to have in your community when you're onboarding new clients. So I'm going to give you something, some, some strategies to help you to get started, to build that out. And then as you new members come in and you start to learn new things, you'll start to iterate a lot of these processes and add things to your onboarding and improve. So basically the things that I think you need to include from the start for your onboarding is your pin post, which we'll get into your start here course, which I believe everybody should have your gamification and rewards and start thinking about what you want to include in that part of the onboarding email welcome sequence, and then your direct message sequence to welcome people as well. So anything I'm missing there, Jeff, that you think might be important? You know, the, the, which isn't really as much on the onboarding side, but I do believe that the questions that you ask people coming into a community have a lot of value because, I, right. again, I think it sets a bit of that tone, right? I mean, if you're asking questions specifically, you know, for example, if you're niche-based, right, and you're, you know, let's say that I'm, I'm a fitness coach, and if one of my questions is, you know, are you currently a fitness coach, you know, or are you in the fitness industry? And and the idea is if that's the goal is to have a fitness based community, like it would be kind of a good question to have. And so those questions might even be kind of like a precursor, I guess, to everything you just shared, because you're right on the money, obviously, with the posts and the start here course yeah. gamification. Yeah, I, I but totally I forgot about the yeah, totally I forgot about the questions. I do think the question, are you a this is kind of a throwaway question because even if they're not, they're gonna lie. I mean, to get in the community, they're gonna say sure. they are, right? That's so true, yeah. you know, but yeah, I think the definitely the membership questions are super important. Most of these in I'll kind of piggyback off that. So most of these community programs, platforms, I think already collect the email address. So you don't necessarily have to ask for email address typically on those questions. I think phone number is great to get.
get because that gives you another channel to potentially reach out to with text and potentially even phone call if you wanted to add that to it. So yeah, definitely the membership questions. I don't think there's a right or wrong way to do that necessarily. I do like to ask, you could ask, hey, you know, what level or stage are you at? But we kind of do that in the poll that we're going to talk about is the pin post. But if you're, you know, if you're teaching people how to do something, you might want to know where on the spectrum they are in that process, right? From, you know, just getting started to reaching their ultimate goal, where are they in that process? So you can kind of get a gauge on where your new members are and where the people like where they need the most help, right? Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah, absolutely. So, so let's chat a little bit about the pin post. So what are your, what are your okay. kind of key elements to the, the pin post? Yeah. So first things first, we want to kind of keep the tone and the culture of these pin posts aligned with the tone, tone and culture that we're trying to, I guess, teach or train our members on around, right? So you want to keep your posts kind of with that same personality, right? So if you want it to be fun, you want to add some jokes to it or add some emojis, some gifts. With our pin posts, we do rotate these. They're not always the same, but I think if you're just getting started, there's a few that are very beneficial. They are working really well for us. Now, again, we'll rotate those out, but then after we are like promoting something or maybe we're shining a spotlight on one of our members and we run that for a little bit, we'll go back to these str- these key ones that are kind of foundational. So the first one is super simple. It's just a start here post and that gives them a few questions as prompts to introduce themselves. So we want everybody that comes into the community to introduce themselves. That's doing a couple of different things. First of all, it's training good behavior, what a good member looks like and what we want them to do, what the types of behavior that we want them to be doing looks like. First, uh, and then it also just connects people. So everybody introduce themselves. Maybe they read an introduction from somebody that, hey, they want to network with, they live in the same area, something like that. And it creates a common connection inside the community. And also people, I'm hoping people connect and maybe even work together. Maybe they get some business from other members in the community. I think that creates a stronger connection for us. The other thing that I like to do those questions for the introduction is what is the number one goal or number one thank you thing you want to accomplish with this community? What that is doing is that's helping us gather some actual data on what people are, are wanting from this community. So that can help to kind of give us some clues into what we need to add to the community, maybe some different rewards that we can have as far as gamification. So that's kind of the first post. Anything that you would add there, Jeff? Well, I, the thing I love about having a really strong first pin post, especially encourage people to, to do that welcome, like kind of a introduce introduction, you know, post for themselves mm-hmm. is it allows other members, like you said, to get to know them, but it might even create other members to start commenting on that and welcoming, yep. welcoming them so that that way it kind of creates a bit of that stickiness in the community. And again, it creates, you know, a, a in that camaraderie and that, again, in that culture that you want to have inside the community. So I think that intro post, making sure people do that is a critical piece. And that's why that you know, first pin post is so important. Yeah. And ours is like super simple. It's basically a little, hey, introduce yourself, a couple of bullet points, and then and those prompt questions. So I think there is some benefit to keeping these a lot of these posts really, really short and to the point. I think we have shorter attention spans these days. And so especially when we're just trying to get people to take action, I think keeping those super short or not putting too much content in there is pretty important. Absolutely. All right, so pin post number two. So here's a place where I was talking about, you know, we have membership questions when people come in, we can gather a little data here, but this post is also another way to gather some data. So this is a poll. This is what we do in ours. You don't have to do this, but this is a poll. Again, what we're doing here is we're gathering some information and it basically is, hey, where, what stage are you in? Because we teach people how to grow our free community is around how to launch a new community and get your first 100 members in 10 days. So that's kind of the goal, the mission of that particular uh, free community. So that the second pin post is a poll that asks them, where are they? What stage are they in with their community? Are they just getting started? Have they just launched the, or they're not started yet? They launched, but they only have a few members. They launched and have a decent, anywhere between like 500 and thousand members or they're, you know, a massive community over, not massive, but community over a thousand members. So we want to understand where they are on that spectrum so we can understand what kind of content they might need. But also when we reach out to them through the DMs to have a conversation, we can personalize that outreach a little bit.
little bit more. Another thing that we're doing with this poll is we're starting to train another behavior that we want inside the community because, you know, some of the posts that we suggest creating to generate engagement inside the community is using a lot of polls. So we want to encourage that behavior with this, this uh, pin post, which is a poll. What do you think about that, Jeff? Yeah, no, I completely agree. Uh, you know, again, you, you want people coming in and you, you want to set the tone from day one. And I, and again, I, polls are an amazing way to get engagement. And I think in addition to engagement, what it really does is it, it helps set again, part of that culture, you know, when people are you know, responsive on a poll, and then mm -hmm. you actually then take that poll information, whatever it is, and then you, you know, act on it. And you, you know, whether it's a training, whether it's a, you know, a special speaker or whatever it might be, again, that just creates that, you know, I guess, confidence and, and belief in, in the culture, in the community, and just keeps people more active. So uh, yeah, super, right. super strong on a need for really quality polls. Yeah. And if you, uh, you just made me think of this, but if you create like a piece of content or a training that helps a specific, you know, uh, category of those people that answered the poll, then you could create a post and then tag the people that answered that certain way on that post to just get more engagement. Another thing with this is kind of off topic, but it goes back to the engagement aspect is when you are using or asking a great way to create engagement inside the community and people just love this is when you ask their op opinion about something, some decision that you're trying to make. So you basically ask their opinion and you do that through a poll and that creates a bunch of engagement. People love that kind of thing. So, all right. So moving on to post number three. So the goal for our free community is to get really to get people onto a phone call. And so on that phone call, we're basically going to either try to see if we can help them, first of all. And then if we can help them, which of our different offers would be the most appropriate for that particular person in their current situation. So we've got our paid membership, which is low ticket. And then we have a high ticket program, which is more done for you type stuff. So with our third poll, we really want to promote that booked call. And it's an onboarding call, sales call, anything, whatever you want to call it. But I think, and this is working really well for us. And I think the reason it's working really well for us is the way that we position the actual call. So we call this our community launch call and we position it as not a sales call, which is not, I mean, if it's a, if the conversation goes that way, we will do it. But we really position that in there and we really drive the benefit for that call. So there's three benefits. There's, hey, we're going to jump on a call. We're going to basically go through our community launch checklist with you. So we're going to walk you through that and help you to set your community up if we if we got some time. Then we're going to actually help you map out your free course. So we have a tool that will basically help us map out all the uh, steps in the process so that they can have an outline for their course on that call, which is pretty damn awesome. <laughs> and then the final thing is we'll give them a traffic hack that they can use to get their first 100 members. So I think it has, I think that call has a really strong positioning. And now we have that post that we have in the community as one of the pinned posts. So they're kind of going down the, the line. So if you think at the top of the funnel, start here, introduce yourself, middle of the funnel, hey, tell us a little bit more about yourself. And then the third pin post is more, hey, let's book a call and let you get, let's get you going. Let's, let's accelerate your results. So what do you think about that? Anything to add there, Jeff? Well, I just think that that, that call becomes super powerful when it's done properly, because again, you're creating an opportunity to really get to know the client and, mm -hmm. and really you know, the member. And then also being able to really serve. I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, that's really what you want to do is if you, if you, when you have a free community, you want to show them that, hey, we, we're the right community that you want to be a part of when they're ready to start paying for a community. So again, we use that call you know, very specifically to just get tons of value, actually move them along so that they're ready to potentially come into one of our big programs. So but again, it's value first. And um, you know, since I do a lot of those calls, as you know, I, I would say that um, I'm very clear that it isn't a sales call. I won't even bring up pricing or that unless they ask. So mm -hmm. you know, it's really important that if that's what you're committing to, if that's what you're advertising is to obviously be consistent with that. And so that's one of those kind of you know little side notes that's pretty important. You know, if you're going to do a call, if you're going to call it a game plan call, make sure you give a game plan. If you're going to call it, you know, an audit call, make sure you give an audit, right? right. And uh, and then, of course, if it's if you tell people it's not a sales call, then don't make it a sales call because nobody wants to be pitch something if that really wasn't what they thought it would be. So be mindful of that. But when they start asking questions, that's a little bit different. So just a little, right. little food for thought there. Yeah, and I think it also goes back to, I wanted to add something here. The Again, the purpose, the goal of our free community is to help people launch their community and get their first 100 members. So that's kind of the first transformational step that they need to take in order to be ready for the rest of our program, which they can either get as a done for you version in our paid community, low ticket, or they can have us kind of set it up and do the things for them, which is in our more of our high ticket program. So if we can get them to have that transformation, that win as fast as possible, which is what we do when we get them on that call, then they're going to be prepared and they're going to be, there's going to be demand and desire for that next step. So, okay. all right. So that leads us to our 
start here course. So we had our pin post and I believe everybody should have a start here course. I think it's very beneficial. It's worked really well for us. And I think there's one thing I like for everybody to kind of keep in mind with this is people did not join the community for your start here course because you're really just like laying the groundwork. So keep this super short, be concise, a short and sweet is good here and just keep it, keep it super, super simple. So I think a good way to structure this is just having a course with some individual lessons where you just give them one little short piece of information and an action step. And then by doing that, you're helping them take these little micro steps and you're not giving them anything deep or in depth with this stuff. You're just basically setting the ground rules, telling them what you expect, and then giving them an action step so they can start to take these little micro steps to start to train them on good behavior and what you're expecting as them from them as a member in your community. So the number one, probably the first lesson that I would have in there is an introduction lesson. So this is where, again, you're going to explain what your mission is with this community. You're going to lay the groundwork of culture. You're going to give them some ground rules, and then you're going to give them a quick walkthrough of what's in the community and give them their first assignment. So this is an action step, and it's what we do in our community. The cool thing about school is that you can pin your community posts inside of lessons in your course modules. And so we pin the introduction post to this module. So that's the action step that we give them. We actually give them three action steps with this one because we want them, if they're ready, to go ahead and book a call. So we have the introduction post, which we link to. We have the poll post, which we also link to. And then we have the book a call post, which we also link to. And we've been booking a lot of calls since we made this kind of tweak to our Start Here course. So it's working. You can use a video here. That's kind of optional. I would, again, keep it short and sweet. You don't want to bore them with this first video, but it's a good way to kind of get your point across about around what the culture is, what you expect, that kind of thing. Anything to add on the introduction? Yeah, I would just simply say that the, the key to that is, again, when, when people come into, you know, community, you know, the, the best thing is to let people know what to do because, you know, mm -hmm. people, a lot of times, it's not that they won't do it. It's just they don't necessarily know what to do. So when you are able to, to, to lay that out, like you said, very simply, very quickly, mm -hmm. and, you know, that kind of gives them the guidelines and expectations. And so, um, I, you know, again, I just echo to you know, keep it simple for sure. But, you know, people, you know, and I, I say this trying to be fair, like people need to be told what to do because a lot of times they just don't know. And so, you know, the, the clearer you can make it, the easier you can make it, the more concise and, and make it, again, a simple, uh, you know, introduction for themselves, the more likely they're going to actually do it. So, um, strong yeah, stuff, think strong of stuff. it like guiding a kid through the, you know, <laughs> through doing something, just take them by the hand and show them exactly what to do. Kind of makes me think of if you, you, you're, you look like a fashionable guy, Jeff, you ever been shopping <laughs> in like, uh, in like a mall, Macy's or something like that? Yeah. I, I mean, I don't know if I'm very stuff. fashionable, but I definitely have. I, uh, my wife is extremely fashionable. So I will say that, yes, I have been in a mall many times with her. So yes, for sure. <laughs> so, you know, how uh, you know, you go into a department store and, you know, they've got signs everywhere and you kind of know where, where to go, but it's not obvious. Whereas like, have you ever been to an Ikea? Oh yeah, man. I, yeah. It, it's, where it's very like, specific. Like, yeah. They guide you exactly down the path that they want you to go. And it's probably yeah. very well mapped out into, they've probably done studies on, you know, where, what, to put where throughout the store to Absolutely. get you to buy more stuff, right? Of course. So that's kind of what you want to do when you onboard people. Just take them down a path and show them exactly what. So next thing after the introduction thing, I like to go into how gamification works. So how can they unlock the next level? And then what kind of rewards are they going to expect when they unlock that next level? So, and then how to engage and unlock levels and give them some different um, action steps that they can use right there in that lesson to start to engage and unlock some points there. So the way that we, and, and I think a good thing, and we, we could do a better job at this, quite honestly, is to think in advance about what are some good rewards that you can give this these people that are going to be super appealing for them that will entice them to actually, you know, engage and do the work it takes to level up, right? I think that, uh, you know, if you think about this, there's a lot of psych psychology going in here. So with our onboarding, we're really training people on the types of behavior that we we want them to take. And then with the gamification and everything, we if they actually take those steps, then we are rewarding with them with something cool, right? Uh, and then this is probably a terrible analogy, but think about if you're training a dog, like if you <laughs> want a dog to take certain activities, you're going to show them how to do that action. And then you're going to give them a treat or something like that if they actually do it. And then eventually that behavior becomes naturally and organic and you don't have to prompt them anymore. You don't have to give them as many rewards or anything. They're just going to do it naturally. So anything to add there, Jeff? Well, I think that this is, you know, again, kind of going a little bit backwards here to the idea of culture.
culture, like, you know, sometimes part of that culture could be a little bit of competitiveness, right? Like inside there, like who has mm-hmm. the most points, you know, who that's one yeah. of the cool things about gamification, you know, like who won the most points this week, you know, who who did the best posts, who who offered the best feedback. I mean, you could really kind of make some fun, fun opportunities for people to participate and reward them even for that participation. So uh, again, I, you know, I, I think it's pretty important when you think about like, again, wanting engagement as you know, defining what that engagement would look like. And then again, gamifying that. And if you want a little bit of competitive culture, then, you know, make sure you really, you know, impart to people like, Hey, you know, we really, so anybody who earns lots of points, you know, gets these big things and make a big deal about it. Um, you know, create a little bit of a competition, you know, maybe have a first place, second place weekly. I mean, there's some different ideas on the engagement stuff we can talk about another day, but um, I, I like that idea of, again, the gamification and, you know, again, a little bit of that competitiveness that you can kind of create, make that part of your culture in a fun way, yeah. like a fun competition, you know? Yeah, it definitely drives people to take action and engage. I mean, if you look at like the school games, they have the school games every month and then people are fighting to stay on the leaderboard so that they can go out to Vegas and meet Hermosi and Sam Evans for a whole mastermind weekend. So if you can come up with an idea for a game or a competition at the very beginning as one of the rewards, and then at the end of the month, you give the person the top five or 10 people that that actual reward, I do believe that that will drive engagement if you can come up with a good idea around it. So I love that. I love that tip. Additional things that you can kind of add to your start here course is uh, if what we do, I'll just tell you what we do is we promote our affiliate link, our school link. So basically, hey, if you're ready to start your own community, here's our affiliate link and we'll actually help you to set up your, and we give them an offer if they use that affiliate link. So he'll, we'll actually jump on a call with you. We'll help you set up your community and we'll help you to map out your free course or create your free course. We also, in our, another lesson, we'll help them, we'll give them the link to download the school mobile app because we want them to have that app on their phone so that they, when we send them a direct message or when we make a post and they're going to notice those notifications on their phone so that they're more likely to jump back into the community and either respond to our DM or check out our post. And then the other thing that we like to do is we like to show them how to pin the community, our community to the very top of the um, of their all their communities so that we're at the, at the very top. And then there's a little sidebar where you can pin the community as well so that that's one of the ones that pops up when they log in. So those are just a couple of other things that we like to add to our Start Here course. We'd love to hear from you guys and see what you guys are using in your Start Here course, if anything's working out for you. So drop a comment and let us know. Um, anything else that you would add there, Jeff? Well, one thing that we do, and, I, and again, I, I think it's really strong, and that's inside of there. We want to make sure we encourage people to level up by a certain point, right? So we usually give, oh, people, yes. a, we, we mm-hmm. give people a time, right? So we yep. say, hey, you know, whether you have seven days or, or two weeks or a month, you know, we want to see you move from level one to level two in a certain period of time. Otherwise, you know, again, we, we will let them know that, you know, if they can't do that or they don't do that, you know, we'll, we'll remove them from the group. Obviously, right. you can do it with a balance. I mean, it doesn't need to be mean, but the idea is, you know, when you're trying to create a culture of, with uh, of a lot of engagement, then that's one of the things that you could do is set a standard, say, hey, you must get to level two by the first 30 days or first 14 days, whatever it might be. And that's something right. that's really important to put inside of the start here as well. Let people know what the expectations are, what the standards are, and then give them again that mission to say, hey, get to level two so you can stay in the community. So it's another you know piece that we do because, you know, we want that culture of, you know, participation and engagement. And we want people, you know, constantly, you know, coming to the community and, and being a you know, part of it. And that doesn't just mean all communities should be like that. You know, sometimes mm-hmm. they're more resource driven, but in our particular case, we want that true community feel. So that's one of the requirements we have. So I encourage people to consider that as, as an option, which is earn a level by a certain date. Otherwise we'll remove you. Yeah. And I honestly, if, if they're not willing to do that, which is super easy, you literally have to introduce yourself and maybe make a comment or two and you're at level two. So if people aren't willing to put in the effort to do that, then we don't want them in our community anyway, right? And again, you don't have to be mean about it, but you know, <laughs> you're just going to be somebody that lurks around and doesn't do anything that we, we don't really want you in the community. So let's talk about the email and welcome and DM welcome sequences. So when you're onboarding your, your new members, when they first come in, I think it's important to have a good welcome sequence. So we use high level for our email automations. And so that's how we deliver this welcome sequence. So the same thing, we, we kind of treat it a lot like a start here course. We want to define that culture and lay some ground rules. And then we want to drive people back into the community. And usually what we'll do is it will either drive them to that start here post. It's like the first email that we send to get them to introduce themselves. We even maybe repeat the prompt in that particular email and then just drive them back to the community to take those little actions. Because again, we're trying to train them on behavior of what a good member looks like, right? And then as they can do that, they'll get rewarded. And again, it'll start to train that behavior. And again, I 
love the idea of that of the game if you of a some kind of competition if you can start uh, when people first come into the community because if you can get them you know trained on that they'll never stop engaging right so I think that's a really really good tip uh, the other emails that we have are driving people back into the course material so not only do we want people engaging in our communities but we also want them to consume the free course content because that's going to help them to get that transformational win that we really need them to have in order to create demand for the next thing. So that's another key piece that we're doing in this welcome email sequence. And then all of our emails have either a PS or something in the email that's promoting that, that free call, that community launch call. Because again, we've positioned it really well, I believe, to get people to want to book that call by driving up the benefit and the value of it and positioning it not as a sales call, which again is not. It's a great way for us to do a little bit of discovery and that could transition into a sales call. So we want all of our emails to ha either have a PS with that call, promoting it and try driving the value of booking that call or somewhere in the email. So that's kind of our welcome sequence. And then you can, you know, start to expand this welcome sequence as you create more and more content, but start with just kind of that framework of driving people back to the community. First of all, trying to get them to take action and then get a book phone call and also consuming that free content. Anything to add there, Jeff? Uh, you know, the only thing is, you know, again, uh, it, it, when you're doing those emails, you know, a lot of times, again, it, you got to make sure you don't obviously bombard people. But even in your start here, you can let them know that, you know, uh, for example, if you're a community that doesn't do a lot of emails, let people know, hey, mm -hmm. we don't send out a lot of emails. Uh, but when we do send you one, we really want you to you know, pay attention to it. Like, I, I know that sounds kind of silly in a way to be kind of like telling people that you don't do a lot of emails. But the reality <laughs> is, is that I know for me, I probably get hundreds of emails every day. And there are specific ones of or who they're from that I'm going to pay more attention to. So again, kind mm -hmm. of letting them know, hey, you know, we don't send a lot of emails here. But when we do send one, make sure that you pay attention to it because it's usually pretty valuable information. Just, you know, something as simple as that so that when you are sending them those reminders or you're letting them, you know, you're sending the email, you know, they're, they are paying attention to it a little bit more. They're kind of focused a bit more on it because, you know, in our particular case, it's about growing your community and getting people to engage. That's what we help people do. So we want to see them engage, not just in the community, but also, you know, with the emails, you know, with most importantly, doing the course, you know, getting the wins. So again, just be, be wise with how you use your emails, you know, and or the, the direct messaging. And, you know, again, it's going to, it's going to help overall the, the community, you know, engagement that you have, but uh, it's really going to get people, you know, started in the right direction. So great stuff. Man. Right. Great stuff. Cool. Yeah. And then our DM welcome sequence or our direct message welcome sequence is with school, you have an automated DM. And really what we're doing with that first DM is we're just going for the call. And the system that we've created and we've set up this onboarding sequence, we probably made some tweaks to it about three or four weeks ago. And it's really been working really well as far as booking calls. Now we can't track exactly which one of those steps is actually booking the call, but, and we probably need to, to, <laughs> to do that, but we're booking a lot of calls from it. So with our DM sequence, we basically send out an automated DM that pitches the call and the benefit and the value of that call. And then if they haven't responded in a day, then Jeff will reach out with a more personalized message that's, you know, just checking in on them and seeing what they need help with and maybe pitching the call. Any input there, Jeff, because you're, you're kind of managing that piece of it? Well, I, again, it, it comes down to the idea that, you know, I, I, I would hope that especially people in, in our community, you know, that their goal truly is to help and serve people, right? And so mm -hmm. when that's the case, we know we can serve them best getting them on a call, right? So I, from, from our perspective, we know that if we can get them on a call, we can have so much more impact. And don't get me wrong, our course, man, is freaking amazing. I mean, for mm -hmm. you know, free course, it's pretty ridiculous. But the idea is that, you know, when we get on a call, we can just make it more personalized, right? And and I think that's kind of what, I think that that's a bit of the challenge right now, right? Kind of this, kind of, they call it what the trust recession, right? Whereas mm -hmm. when you get them on a call, I can make it more personalized. I really can give so much more value. And the other part about it is I can give them direction what kind of to do next in our free yeah. course or where to focus on. So, you know, I would highly recommend people being very proactive and really pushing that kind of onboarding call with, again, mm -hmm. total intent to help and serve. And you'd be surprised, you know, what kind of great responses you, you get from that and really, really, truly will help grow your business quite a bit. Because when people see that you want to help them and you are genuine about it, you know, they just have a better tendency to want to work with you and, and obviously potentially become your know, paid clients in, in other ways. So yeah. you know, be very proactive right. with the direct messaging and the emails. Yeah. So that really gives a 10,000 foot view of our onboarding process. Hopefully it gave you guys some different uh, ideas for your own onboarding process. And again, as you build out your own onboarding process, this is a good foundational kind of framework that you can follow. But as people start joining your community, you're going to start learning what they need and what might work better, test some different things and iterate to really dial in your onboarding process because everybody's community is going to be, be different. Everybody's members are going to be a little bit different. So, but this is a, I think a pretty solid framework to start from. And so we'd absolutely love to hear what you guys are doing with your onboarding. So if you have something, cool tactics that you 
want to share with our audience, be, be sure to drop in the comments and maybe we'll even reach out to you and interview you because we'd love to, to hear more about what you guys are doing. So anything that we missed in this, Jeff, that we might want to talk about before we, before we go? I don't think so, man. I, I think we're, you know, really gave a great foundation. And again, you, you want to keep it simple. You, know, you don't want to over overload them. So I think that's a great, great starting point. And again, like you said, each person will have a more unique situation. So, you know, do personalize it for, for you, your clients and everything else. But overall, I think that's a, a great foundation. If you start there, you're going to have a lot of success. Yeah. Well, if you like this episode, be sure to like and comment and subscribe. And again, if you want that free course, that free masterclass where we show you exactly how to launch your brand new community and get your first 100 members in 10 days, again, click the link in the description to join our community. And you can also see how our onboarding process works to kind of model it for yourself. So that's it for this episode. We'll see you guys in the next.